Good morning. Um, as you all know, David and I will be trying to give you new information as it comes up. Uh, I would like to introduce you to a new way of doing it. If you can see this cartoon, and it says, mm, thanks, Grandma, but she doesn't play soccer. We have to realize that you and I, we are role models, not only to each other, but to our children, our nieces and nephews, and everybody else. So we need to be careful. While we eat, while we eat, everything shows to others what we stand for. So it's very important. Could I have the next one, please? I went to the store a little while ago, and I thought that we as Seventh-day Adventists have obtained the information about healing through our food from Ellen G. White, and also in the book of Genesis where God gave Adam and Eve the instructions of what foods to eat. And the biggest sin came through them, and what was it? It was the food, what we choose to do. And so I went to the store and I found this book, Healing Remedies, so it's gone out. And I looked at the price of it and it was $18. And so I ended up with $6 in my checking account for a little while. But I thought it was very important. You can get it at the library, you can look through it. So between David and I, we will be giving you different remedies different herbs that God has given you, so you can start collecting them, okay? Because this is a good way to do, to keep ourselves healthy, because God gave us all these things to give us, maintain us. In Psalms 139, 14, it says, And I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And God is the creator who gave us things that maintain our health and can get us back to health. So Ellen G. White has given us, the Word of God has given us to us, and we can basically go back and, and see that, like, um, people in the Hindu, how, what kind of diet do they have? The Hindu religion or society, what kind of food do they mostly have? They're vegetarians, okay? And according to my instructions or my research, they started out at, 2,300 years B.C. And a lot of the Pakistanians, they, a lot of them have, there are 820 million people in this country, and they're basically all vegetarians. So you and I need to be the reflection of the Word of God, okay? And I, in many cases, I will have to admit that I'm not always the best example of what health can occur. And as Dr. Segarra can testify, I'm on fourth medications trying to control my blood pressure, and I still can't do it. But I am trying every day to be a good example and be reflective of what I believe and what I eat. In our present lesson, David and his friends, what lesson was the first one that they learned? Diet. Why was it so important? Why did the food make such a difference for them? Exactly. Their diet was different, so therefore we today, the lessons are written in the book of God to keep reflecting back to us of how important it is. Okay? Um, can you show me the next slide, please? And here's another book. For we as Adventists, we have known a lot about the blue zones, about different countries, the people's lifestyle, lifestyle is a little different. They live a lot longer and healthier. So now here's another book to verify to each one of us how important what we eat is, is vital. And that when we do not take good care of ourselves, especially the women, we pass that information on to our unborn child. And then that child, if they don't take care of us, they pass those genetic defaults on to their children. So it goes on to the second to the third generation. So you and I have an important job to do. Can you give me number four, please? I will make a copy of this for you next Sabbath. I'm sorry I wasn't able to make a copy. I had given you this lecture about the microbiome. In your gut, 
we have so many bacteria, as vast as there are plants and trees in the rainforest. You and I feed those bacteria by what foods we eat or we kill it by what we ingest, okay? Many, the, the, um, the chemical that keeps us feeling really good, which at this moment I can't remember, is produced in our gut and some of it is produced in our brain. So what we eat affects us chemically in our state of mind or our clarity. If you hadn't slept very well and you eat a lot of carbs, how do you feel after that meal? We feel sleepy, very sluggish, okay? So it's very important that we change those things. And remember I talked to you about the Russian doctor they was doing uh, research years ago. What happened to him that after his wife died and he injected himself with typhoid, what happened to him? Do you recall? Did he die or did he live? He lived, okay? He injected the same stuff to his friend and his friend lived. They injected to a third person that was working with him and he almost died. The big difference is that bacteria the healing stuff that is in our gut that keeps us well. If you eat good food, that bacteria keeps multiplying and gives us our immunity. 70 to 80% of your immunity, my immunity, is in our gut. So when you eat your greens, and how much greens are you supposed to eat a day? Shelly statements? A head full at least, okay? So it becomes very, very important, okay? The other thing that I know, I've tried to look about Ellen G. White, what she says of fermented food, and I haven't been quite able to find it. You've got to really remember that in ancient times, they used to preserve their foods by fermentation. And fermentation, what it does is it increases the microbiomes, microbacteria, bacteria that heals our gut and that preserves our, our food. So when we eat it, it encourages that kind of bacteria. When we eat or we ingest uh, antibiotics because we're sick, we got some disease or whatever else, it destroys a lot of our good bacteria. So after you have terminated your treatment, you need to replace that once again, okay, to get your bacteria to heal again. You and I have the most information about health, well-being, than any generation has ever had. We have science behind it. We have phones. We have TV. We have books. We have everything available. So it's very important that we, as Seventh-day Adventists, we start practicing and let other people see that our diet is different than everybody else's and that our health and our longevity reflects those standards that we have. I hope that, um, that we will continue to enjoy this information. And like I said, we, David and I will be working at trying to and share this information to you so you have it available. For me, sometimes to come into town for one hour because I have a cold or something, it's a little too far. So I'm trying to do all the health things, the herbs, to go back to those things that I learned as a child. And I know that I used to tell my parents, you're just too old-fashioned, there's something better. But now that I'm older, I'm trying to go back to those things that are basic, that do not conflict with health and do not cause all their uh, complications of medicine does. Any questions, any comments from any of you? Okay, thank you. May God bless you. And uh, next month, it will be Dave's turn to give us some more information. God bless you.